Pusha T in the six. Ah. Uh, uh, smoke. Um, I mean, so I'm not I'm not really interested in Pusha T dissing Drake or Drake dissing Pusha T. Um and who's winning and who's gonna be the better rap, who can talk about who can who can bring each other down the best. I mean, I know it's a part of hip hop and that's cool, but it's also a whole other side of hip hop that has nothing to do with that. Um that doesn't champion that. Um that doesn't thrive off that, that doesn't need that to build. Um but and there is a part of hip hop that actually does build off that. I mean, battle rap is is especially the URL space. Shout out to the URL and all those dudes. I mean they are at each other's throats and it gets personal and it goes crazy and it does that. And does it build on the art form? Like, yeah, it does. I mean, it, it, it introduces MCs to new themes and tactics. Maybe it gives them new, new, new motivations uh, to expand uh, the skill set or the skill level of the, of, the, of the form, if not overall, at least in that pocket when it comes to lyricism. Um, but at, again, you don't need that to become a great lyricist. You don't need to have become a battle rapper to become a great lyricist. So that that correlation is doesn't necessarily prove out across all uh, scenarios. Um, but it is a teachable moment within this simply because of the race aspect that was brought up um, and how it was presented and how it became immediately focused upon one thing. When you when you remove the context of what actually could potentially be happening. Now, I'm not saying that's what the homie six was his intentions were. I'm, I'm almost sure that they were. But because it's Ramadan and I don't want to break my fast by maybe lying or assuming something, I'm just reading it as just a as a as a as a, as a uh, spectator, just like you are. So when I when I seen the. Uh, the Drake, the Drake Duppy freestyle came out. I really did. I, tr I, I mean, I really try not to listen to it until after, uh, <laughs> after time to break fast, because uh, I didn't want to catch a stray in the effort or something like that. And it really just shocked me or whatever. Um, really, really religiously sensitive during Ramadan, so I try not to listen to it. Um, and the same thing with, with Pusha's thing. Uh, didn't didn't want to listen to it after. So when the Duppy freestyle came out, if, if you don't know, I'm a big fan, a big fan of Drake. Um, I think that he's a in a in in his capacity as an MC when he actually puts in that effort to actually perform as an MC. I mean, like he's he's it's something to see. It's very it's very very um, dope as a as a as a MC myself to see uh, MC like just like go off. And there's been there's been moments where I've seen Drake go off, and I was just like, oh wow. Especially his earlier albums when he was really just like about the bars. It was kind of like, wow, this dude can really rap. No matter what you feel about him or uh, think about him or think about his music, when it comes down to his his raps, I mean, they're really good. Whether they're ghostwritten or not, I mean, we don't know what all is ghostwritten or what isn't ghostwritten or what's not or who does this or who does that. But I mean, I'm not even going to have that conversation with you. I actually wrote a whole essay about ghostwriting uh, when the Meek Mill and, and Drake... The first beef with Meek Mill and Drake came out, and I would cordially invite you to go find that. Um, it was all about ghostwriting and its place in and in and around hip hop and what it means. But for me, I'm not even thinking about that, right? Because we're not talking about who's the best rapper. That isn't what this is about, right? Because I'm assuming that everybody who's watching this wouldn't isn't judging either Pusha T or Drake to be the best rapper. I don't think that they're saying this is a competition for the GOAT of who's the best lyricist rapper. I, you're, we're not talking about that. We're talking about within this beef in and of itself, who had the best verse and et cetera, et cetera. This, is, this isn't something about the, this is the end all be all tournament of who's the best rapper ever in the world. We have a long time before we even, even if we even are able to have that conversation. Um, and I'm definitely not going to have a conversation with y'all um, because some of y'all don't rap. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, um, so I like I heard Drake's piece. I thought it was I thought it was again dope because I like Drake when he when he gets in his little bag and it's cool. And I was like, oh man, let's see if Pusha. And y'all see me on Twitter. I was like, man, let's see what Pusha gonna do. Pusha gotta respond to the love. Pusha gotta kill him. And I, I I keep a jovial, almost sarcastic attitude about it. Um, I hope it's something within that beef that doesn't spill into the streets or go anything like that. Um, 
and you kind of know that that's, you hope that that's not going to happen. So I always kind of go with the best. I don't think it's going to be that. I see it more, hopefully them coming to terms with it after all this is over. Maybe, I don't know if that's the case now, but um, reconciling that and moving on, you know, I think it's something that, you know, they have more power together than they do apart. And I'm not just saying that to be, to cop out or nothing like that. Um, maybe sometime me on Twitter, it might get lost in translation. You might not hear my tone. Um, but sometimes I'm joking. I try and throw a LOL or emoji or some funny picture to let you know I'm not really taking this seriously. Um, and i am come from a battle space and I understand that. So I have this side of me that's very like chill and, you know, professory. Shout to Ebony Magazine about the professor. But there's another side to me that's very like funny and, you know, but also very when it comes to battling, I'm going to call it how I call it and I'll battle you and do disc records and all that stuff. So not elite or above anyone. So I'm not really taking the whole thing serious in terms of it being a life or death situation uh, between these two brothers who I know uh, and are actually super cool. Push, Pusha T is super cool. Drake is always super cool. Uh, been on the road, actually, I think with both of them. I think Pusha was on the Blue in the Dark tour. Been on the records with, with Pusha. So I have no ill will to e either one of them. Um, and so when the push when the push verse came around, I was to push verse. I'm like, oh, he 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 went off. He really dug and got mean more for the bars. I don't really I don't really get into the personals thing. I mean, it's there, but it's like I don't. I'm as a man, that's none of my business. Um, so I'm not really just gonna chat it up or barbershop chat about somebody else's personals things like that. But when it comes to rapping and things of that, I mean, I will comment on the quality and the levels of the raps. And they both went off. You know, Drake went off. Pusha went off. Um, you know, I had a couple theories about how Pusha should strategize and maybe, like, respond and maybe don't do this. And, you know, if you really, I personally think that Drake, you can't beat Drake in a battle. I think he's kind of positioned himself in society and in the game in a certain way that unless you really, I mean, your paperwork has to be extremely clean and neat. And your ability to bar him to death has to be uh, just top notch. And that's not like, oh, I hate Drake. I'm against Drake. Or this is how you beat Drake. I mean, it's just as a rapper, it's one of those things where you sit back and you think like, how could you, if I, if I had to battle this dude, what would I do to do that? And it was like, ah, oh, well, I can't battle him. Because as soon as he says something about Obama, about me, I'm done to the whole world. I'm not, my, my turn is over. Um, but there is a, you know, there's something fun and interesting about thinking about if you had to battle Drake, how would you do it? What would it, what would the processes be like? What would the bars be? What would you talk about? Um, and not in a not in a way to bring him down or hurt him personally or something like that, but just more just from a rapper's kind of that competitive point of view, which is what you guys were interested in. Like, what do you think is comp competition? Is this? So it's like, all right, competition is it supposed to be fun? Is it supposed to be to the death? Like, what are we talking about? So just to lay it out first for that battle space, like you know, I, I like Drake, I like Push T. Um, I always liked them, like their music. Um, I don't agree with a hundred percent of everything, um, simply because I don't go to the club. So I mean, I don't, I don't. I mean, the club. I mean, I'm rocking the car to, to Galchester, but you know, other than that, and the same thing with Pusha. I mean, I mean, there's only so much. You know, I'm not even gonna speak on that, but there's only so much of that stuff that I can take. Um, especially in light of when your purpose is to be like, you know, whatever my past is, whatever your past is, what are we doing to reset the narrative for the future, for the future generations to show them that there's a, a wider space. Um, and there's, there's much more to being a black man than being a, you know, coming from the streets. Um, and the kids who don't come from the streets, you don't need to go to the streets to get a certain level of validation, um, or certain life proof or a certain level of manhood. Um, you don't necessarily need that. And I'm not saying that 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 Pusha is guilty of, of that because I, I don't think that he is in totality, but I think everybody plays a role and needs to be very deliberate about what their role is when you think about the purpose of black folk. And there's some folk who don't care about that. They don't care about it's, it's them and what they do. And I, I'm, I'm sure that Pusha, Pusha, Pusha is, a, is, a, is a very open-minded, very thoughtful person behind what he does and there is some reasoning. Um, and he's, he's totally about some of the same processes and projects of increasing uh, and improving the conditions of black folk overall. Um, now, let's get to the business of the cover art. Now, the cover art that Pusha T put out for uh, his freestyle, um, when, when I first seen it, 
I was like, oh, yo, what? What, what is this? What is this? What is this? I didn't think it was Photoshop, but I was like, what is this from? And of course, that's a question everybody asks. It's like, hey, what is this from? Where, is the, where did he get this, this picture from? And I immediately think, because I'm a thinker and I think very crazily, I'm like, man, this has to be, there has to be a reason behind this, right? This isn't just something that, you know, just comes out of nowhere, right? Or like, you know, so that's why people think like, is this Photoshop? Because why would this exist? So when you, when you start to do the research, like, where does this come from? Or you start to ask mentally just yourself, where does this come from? You come up with all these theories and hypotheses. And one of the hypotheses I came up with was like, I mean, it has to be for something, you know, it has to be for some type of maybe promotion for something, maybe a video that we don't know about, maybe something old, because it's definitely, it's definitely young Drake, it's definitely not swole, bearded Drake. Um, it's like, where did this come from? Uh, and then you, I'm thinking like, man, Drake used to be an actor. So, I mean, he's, he, he came from Degrassi, so it might be something that's a part of his acting thing or, you know, whatever. Acting is a very... You know, it goes all over. You don't know stuff will come up. You're dressed like a ninja, or you're dressed like this from some old acting stuff. So who knows? So you think like, where does this come from? Where does this come from? Um, and I kind of left it at that because it was kind of undescribed and it was kind of like let's see because no one knew. And then go on my Twitter to kind of talk about it, and somebody sends a photo of the whole thing, and you start to see like, oh wow, this was from this dude's website. It was a photographer. He took the photo. Um, you know, here's the link and somebody sent, not the link, but they sent the actual full, you know, I guess, photo shoot of what it was. And it was a the blackface picture of Drake like like this. And then it was a picture of him saying like, like this in blackface, but one was a color picture, one was a black and white picture. And for me, instantly as an artist and a person who loves art and painting and photography and does all that stuff. I immediately seen it was like, oh, wow. And then you look at the at the in the corner of the title and it says Drake, us, them or us and them or us versus them or something like that. And I immediately seen it as being like, oh, this is something I didn't even see the Jim Crow shirt, which is another story, which I'll get into. But I didn't even see the Jim Crow shirt. I just saw the two photos and I immediately knew what the potential intentions of that photo shoot were. And I knew it wasn't. You know, I mean, Drake is black. Like, why would he? Why would he just willy nilly throw on blackface to make fun of black folk? He's black. If he when he takes the the paint off, he's still black. He's still in blackface. Like it, it didn't that that, that so that kind of piece didn't make sense to me, and it still doesn't make sense to me. And it's actually I don't believe it. Um, I think what it what it was, and even the the. Uh, the the photographer even hinted at towards what the point was. He's making a statement about, you know, black culture, the perspective of, of or the, what black folks are supposed to be. Are we just supposed to be entertainers and shucking and jiving? Um, and then what is the pain behind that shuckery and that jivery? Like, what does that do to us? How do people perceive us? What is the perception of us? Um, and some people may not like that he used blackface to do that, but this isn't the first time that people that we know, famous people who we who we idolize in the black community, um, have used blackface specifically to prove a point. There's a movie called Bamboozled, which came out I think in the '90s. It was a, I think it's a Spike Lee film, and it has Savion Glover, who's one of the most amazing tap dancers in the world. Uh, it has Damon Wayans. It has a uh, 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 Jada Pinkett. Um, most death is in it. Charlie Baltimore is in it. There's a suite of rappers that are in it. And the whole, sh the whole movie is about, uh, a show where, you know, Ken uh, I think Damon, it's either Keenan Ivory Wayans or Damon Wayans. He works at like some television company and they want him to do a show, but they want it to be edgy. And so he's like, you know, he wants to get fired. So he thinks that he put, I think that's just the plot. If he puts on, he, he presents it in this show that's going to get him fired. That they're, that they, if I'm just put on the wildest show ever and nobody's going to really accept it, it's going to get him fired out of his contract. And it was a show about blackface. And he's brought back blackface. But he brought back blackface with black people in blackface um, to prove like this point. Um, and the movie is wild. If you've never seen it, it's wild. It's shot in a very weird way. It's almost like it's a weird back TV show kind of thing. The acting is is somewhat good. I mean, somewhat superb. But we're not going to get into that because we know about Black Panther. And, you know, I'll talk about actors. 
Um, but the, uh, it's an, for the statement that the film makes, it's amazing. But it's 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 it, it's for, it presents to you a situation as a black person. And, and if you're a black artist and a black entertainer, it really brings home the point of like, what is your purpose? Right. What is the reason that you do what you do? Um, and there's some folks who just do it for strictly for the entertainment purposes. There's some folks who do things that we look at as like, wow, why is this dude shucking and jiving? You know. Why is this dude tap dancing for these for these white folks? Why is this dude doing this? Why is this doing that? And other other capacities we'll look at as like this dude is standing up for this or this dude is standing up for that. It's funny that we we as as, as kind of these revolutionary politically charged artists, we go and do a show and you look out in the show and it's like the whole first fifteen rows is white folks. Um, you know, and it's just kind of like you know, say the N word that I put in this song or this down the third, which you just saw with, with, with Kendrick. Um on the flip side, you see somebody like Kanye, who I've been on tour with, who, you know, will be in a stadium full of people and tell white folks when the, when the N-word comes around and one of his songs, you know, tells white people it's, it's okay. This is your only time where you can actually say nigga when it's in my song or something like that. And it was kind of like, wow, right? And you got a stadium full of white people saying nigga. Um, but it's cool because, you know, Kanye kind of gave them the permission that night. But it was more than one tour. That, that he did that on, and it, it, it always was a little funky to me, and that's why I did uh, uh, my song, uh, uh, not Lamborghini Angels, but uh, Audubon Ballroom, saying black, you know, black uh, white people can't say the word nigga, um, and it was really somewhat of a response to, you know, what I seen Kanye do on tour, it's like, bro, that's not, you got to be careful with that, um, so I mean, all in all, it's, it's you know, how much of artistic expression do you allow artistic expression to exist and create conversation and instigate circumstances? And is is that issue settled? Is there is there is the issue of blackface and black folk um, exploiting themselves, exploiting the worst of themselves, exploiting the 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 showing off the the most banal, the most um, base of themselves for entertainment and for capital gain is that something that is settled and that's why we don't need blackface anymore somebody positioning themselves or, or presenting blackface as a as a as a conversation starter does it not exist in real life right so drake's thing was definitely not real life it was a photograph but does blackface actually exist right in black folk in the artistic space right now that's not in blackface i mean they're just using their regular face um, that isn't a character, a caricature. Um, I mean, it, it presents those positions and it presents those questions. A learned, thoughtful person, I think, would actually want to look at that as a little bit deeper before like becoming emotionally um, invested into it and maybe be a little bit more intellectually invested before you allow it to you know, seep into your emotions and it becomes part of your behavior and you start to make emotional mistakes. Um, Best make those intellectual mistakes because they be, can become corrected. When it becomes an emotional part of you, it becomes a little bit harder to shake that. And it hurts when you get corrected. Um, it's not to defend or to deflect, which was my first statement. It's to provide the context. And the context from a critical thinker like myself with purpose is to how can I take this, from my point of view, take this conversation and then push it somewhere else where we really can get at the heart of what's being presented and not get caught up just in the trend of, you know, he, push a T called a body. Or, um, yo, did you see that was dope? But you missed kind of the whole point. Or you, or you don't realize how easily you can be influenced to just look at one thing but and put, taking it out of its context. And then it creates this whole wave of... of uh, Ignorance and misguidedness, right? So that's basically it. I don't really pick the sides. I think Drake is a little bit ahead in terms of the battles. Maybe there'll be more rebuttals. I don't know because I'm not listening even to After Ramadan. I'm kind of done with this. Um, but I do, you know, as as you know, Lupe Fiasco fans or critics, I do think that it's it's important. To is that it acts obviously it shows it hits some type of nerve that people still feel a certain way about that representation and what that representation means and what it stands for. So what I would say to you is take that same momentum that you have with that emotional reaction to seeing that one picture of Drake and then do a full kind of deep dive into the history of blackface, 
um, what it was meant, what it was meant for, why was it, why was it uh, so prevalent in the, in America for a very long time? I mean, blackface was a part of a like actual American culture for a long time. And <laughs>